a small stained white cloth and an empty bottle of fish sauce. <clears throat> you would certainly be forgiven for dismissing such items as worthless and insignificant. But for the first parish priest I served under as a deacon at Holsworthy, Father Tan Nguyen, they were his most precious possessions, a small stained white cloth and an empty bottle of fish sauce. In the 1980s, Father Tan was then resident in South Vietnam, and he was approached by the communist government and asked to spy on his brother priests and to secretly report back on the internal workings of his diocese. He was deliberately selected because he had a sharp intellect and genuine piety, and thus was much respected. And the government said to him that if you agree to do this, we will pressure the hierarchy of Vietnam to make you a bishop, to facilitate your espionage, offering you a life of relative comfort, power, and prestige. <clears throat> Being a man of integrity, Father Tan, to borrow the words of today's first reading, decided to put his trust in the Lord and not in man, and so he refused to cooperate. But in consequence, he had to pay a heavy price. He was arrested, imprisoned, and told that he would spend the rest of his life in jail for treason. For the first few years, he was placed in solitary confinement. A small, damp, pitch black, dark cell became his new home. And the only time he'd ever leave that cell was for intermittent interrogations. <clears throat> the idea was that pitch black darkness, the deprivation of light, would send him crazy and force him to acquiesce to the requests of the communist government. Now just try to reflect on that, 24 hours, just 24 hours of sitting in absolute darkness. And then imagine doing that for weeks and months. Why won't this man break? Why won't this man break? Father Tan overheard one of the frustrated prison officials shriek because he had lasted several years of unimaginable suffering and still showed no signs of relenting. What was his secret? <clears throat> well, what the prison officials did not know was that Father Tan's sister had sent him some unconsecrated hosts hidden inside a hollow loaf of bread covered in a white cloth and placed some sacramental wine inside a bottle of what looked like fish sauce. And so each day, despite his poverty, his hunger, and often in pitch black darkness, Father Tom would take a small piece of the host and place a drop of wine into the palm of his hand. And entirely from memory, being a bright man, he would celebrate mass as reverently as he possibly could. And so in a place where many would only find suffering, loneliness and despair, Father Tan said that he found himself at the centre of the universe. For who but God incarnate would become truly present in the palm of his hand whenever he said those words of consecration, this is my body, this is my blood. It is a thought that should unnerve us, shock us, disturb us to the very core of our being, that even in that dark, lonely and despairing place, yes, even there, God, our creator and savior, will come to rest in the wounded palm of his mortal creature whenever the words of consecration are said. This is my body, this is my blood. And that is why the Mass is the source and summit of our Catholic faith. After seven years, he escaped to Australia. And I've often asked him, I said, Father Tan, how did you escape from jail? And he just says, I'm very smart. So smart that he's never allowed to return to the country. And when I've been to Vietnam, and I remember speaking 
to the rector of the seminary and he said to me, you know, if Father Tan was allowed to return to Vietnam, the whole country would come to meet him at the airport. But every now and then he would place that empty bottle of fish sauce and the white cloth that he used to purify his hands when he'd celebrate mass in that prison on the altar. And I used to ask him why. And well, what he said was equally as shocking. He said it's to remind me that those seven years in prison were the happiest years of my life. They were the happiest years of my life. Shocking. But why? For the simple reason he said that he never felt so close to God and felt a unique, transforming joy a human happiness that he had never experienced before. And that's the mystery, but that mystery brings that very confronting gospel that we heard today to life. We who live in relative comfort are likely to find the words of today's gospel very removed and very confronting. Happy are you when people hate you, drive you out, abuse you, denounce you as a criminal on account of Christ. Don't just be happy, our Lord says. He says, rejoice and dance. <laughs> You know, uh, but alas, alas for you, if people speak well of you. Yes, you might find wealth. Yes, you might find acceptance. Yes, you might find laughter. Yes, you might find consolation. But you will not find true, lasting, eternal happiness. Now, let's be honest. That's not easy. On one level, we all recoil when we hear those words. But the strange thing is, that gospel, the Beatitudes, is one of the most popular parts of scripture. Even Richard Dawkins, the notorious atheist, says it's his favorite part of scripture. Because something is pulling at our hearts when we hear it, because it's saying something true. Truth is proven in the experience of life. You look at those who have it all in a worldly sense, those who have wealth and fame, and they will tell you how quickly it can become a curse. And although we know this, although we can see none of that makes them happy, we still idolize them. We still want what they want. And that's why the story of Father Tan is so powerful. True happiness is tied to the quality of our relationship with God above all else. To how much we trust in him, especially when we suffer or are de defamed for loving him, first and foremost. For if we have Christ and the church, then really we have it all. The challenge for us remains, how can we make the words of today's gospel become our lived reality here and now? Well, one simple thing we could do is ask ourselves. What do I daydream about? What do I dream about? Do I dream of winning the lottery? Do I imagine what it might feel like to be promoted and be popular? Now, when those such thoughts come, and they're attractive thoughts, and I have them too, remember and pray those words of our Lord in today's gospel. <laughs> alas, alas, alas. For yes, those thoughts might give us momentary consolation, a powerful distraction. But why settle for momentary consolations and distractions when we can contemplate eternal happiness? So my friends, rejoice, dance and be glad that you and I are fortunate to know the secret to human happiness. And so there is no reason to ever lose your peace. There is no reason to worry as long as we always remember and pray the words of today's psalm. Happy, happy is the one who places their trust in God.